The following video is brought to you in part by the amazing Patreon producers you see before you. If you'd like to show your support, you can do so at patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. Your support means the world to me, and I love you so much. Now let's get to it. What's up, Dan Dans? It's time to count down 10 games that just didn't get enough love. Well, another 10 games that didn't get enough love, as this is the second time that you guys have chosen this topic in a subscriber milestone poll. The link to that first video is down in the description if you want to check it out after you finish the sequel. And let's be perfectly clear, these are not games that are necessarily underrated. They may have reviewed perfectly fairly, they're just games that didn't then and don't now get the love or respect they deserve. Let's get to it. Man, I cannot begin to tell you guys how many comments came through on my Triangle X Squared Circle retrospective of TNA Impact that said, Wow, this looks fun. I never played this game. This game sold well and reviewed fairly, scoring mostly in the low 7s range, but it's like I said, this one just isn't talked about today and didn't gain much traction back in 2008 when it released. The real heartbreaker, though, is how many people love WWE All-Stars and shit on TNA Impact, not realizing that All-Stars is built using Impact's engine. I get it, you're loyal to your favorite brand, but you can't go around dumping on games you've never played. The Ultimate X match is super fun and has never been seen again outside of this game. The story mode is ridiculous, the graphics look great to this day, shit. I love TNA Impact, Dan Dan's. Let's get sickening. Booger Man is a platformer on the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo that has you controlling a fat, bald superhero. Power-ups are found by digging through piles of shit. Enemies explode in a fart cloud when defeated. In place of a double jump is a fiery hot diarrhea fart that propels our man into the sky. Who needs warp zones when you can just flush yourself down the toilet? Levels are filled with ears leaking green fluid. Walls smeared with poop that appears to be leaking pus. When the third boss can't hit you with his spit, he literally pulls a leech off his ball sack and sends it slithering towards you. I told you we were gonna get sickening. Booger Man is an immature child's dream and a fun game to boot. I would say it's crazy that this never got a sequel, but it's hard to believe it exists in the first place. And, I mean, a remake was attempted on Kickstarter, and out of the $375,000 the team sought, they earned just over 10% of their goal. Ouch. The PlayStation 3 launched with several great games under its wing. Marvel Ultimate Alliance, Resistance Fall of Man, a million sports games, another Tony Hawk title. There was no shortage of fun to be had, regardless of which genre was your favorite. The PS3 launch title I come back to most often is MotorStorm from the now defunct Evolution Studios. I remember these graphics just blowing my mind. The tracks we leave in the mud staying in place throughout the entire competition rather than disappearing was insane to me. Having different tracks that range from mountainous peaks to dry desert plains to deep muddy trenches kept the locales interesting, while the variety of vehicles at our fingertips kept the gameplay aspect fresh from race to race. MotorStorm's soundtrack is a banger, featuring songs from Nirvana, Slipknot, Queens of the Stone Age, and more. The original's two sequels, MotorStorm Pacific Rift and MotorStorm Apocalypse, could also easily make it onto a list like this, but that's another story for another time. Have you ever even heard of Rival Schools? I'm not judging you if you haven't, I just learned of its existence about 10 years ago, and the damn game's been out in the US since 1998. Rival Schools is a fighting game not centered around martial artists or sorcerers or criminal masterminds. Its story is built upon the war between the students of two schools from opposite sides of a Japanese city. The characters fit stereotypical middle school student archetypes. Batsu is our main protagonist, described as a hot-blooded transfer student. Akira is a badass biker chick. Shoma is the big jock on campus who will wreck you with his baseball bat. The list goes on and on. Rival Schools is hard to come by these days, but it's definitely worth seeking out for the double team moves alone. Every combination of fighters has their own double team maneuvers, and the cinematic presentation of said team ups will pop any room of friends gathered around the PS1. The story mode is captivating and definitely worth a playthrough, but this one excels in the multiplayer department for sure. I'm normally not a huge fan of multiplayer games. I don't dislike them, I just prefer to play on my own and worry about my personal journey. But every once in a while, there's a game that bucks the trend. 
2007 Warhawk for the PlayStation 3 was unlike any game I'd ever played before. There was no story mode, there wasn't even really a story at all. There were just opposing factions at war and you were dropped somewhere in the middle of the shit. Being able to fight on foot, in a tank, in a jeep, in a Warhawk itself, the game felt limitless. Warhawk was an online only title, and sadly, the servers were shut down in early 2019, bringing its 11 year run to an end. If you never got a chance to play this one, man, I'm sorry. This was awesome. Many of you guys know, my first console was an NES. My brother and I eventually got our own Sega Genesis, and for some reason, one of the games that always stood out to me was Crewball. The cartridge was bigger than my other Genesis games, it had a weird yellow notch on it. It was strange all around. As a child, I just thought, wow, this game's kind of fun. I was way too young to realize this was a pinball game centered around Motley Crue. I'm not a huge fan of Motley Crue or anything, but come on. Hearing Dr. Feelgood in 16 bits is fucking cool. Crewball features pinball boss fights, brick breaking stages, and even some cool little cutscenes. I've never heard this one come up in the Genesis conversation, so I thought it deserved a little bit of love. Crewball is definitely worth a look. As a longtime fan of mixed martial arts, you have no idea how excited I was leading up to the release of EA MMA. Fedor Emelianenko, Randy Couture, Ken Shamrock, Boss Rutan, Jacare Souza, Shinya Aoki, all the biggest names I couldn't play as in the new UFC game were here. The game boasted the Strike Force license. The career mode allowed you to choose which promotions you wanted to sign for. It was everything I wanted from UFC 2009 Undisputed that I didn't get. The knockouts looked fucking brutal. The live events feature allowed the entire community to come together and watch what were, in essence, pay-per-view events with the developers of the game. That's something I've not seen recreated in any game to this day. Guys, I adore EA MMA with all my heart. I was going to do a retrospective on it last year, but there doesn't seem to be much interest in that, unfortunately. I've got stories about this one for days, so maybe somewhere down the line. This one is probably the least played game on the entire list. Age of Zombies was released in early 2010 on the Sony PSP, and let me tell you something right now. This game is so much fun. The main character's name is Barry Steak Fries. He's traveling through time, annihilating horde after horde of zombies in an attempt to find his way home. The one-liners are abundant, the bosses are ridiculous, and the weapons at our disposal are aplenty. And its extremely simple control scheme means that anyone of any age can figure this one out in no time. It's downloadable on your PS Vita, which I know you own, if you know it's good for you. And you'd be insane to not grab this one up. I'm literally going to play Age of Zombies when I'm done writing this script. The urge has taken control of me. There's a common misconception out there that all Superman video games are terrible. Some of them are horrific, don't get me wrong. There are a few that were colossal letdowns. But that's not all the Man of Steel has to offer in the gaming department. 2002's Superman Shadow of Apocalypse for the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube, for my money, may be the best Superman game ever released. Its art style comes straight from Superman the Animated Series, and nearly the entire voice cast from the show are here to lend their skills to the story. We've got all of the Man of Tomorrow's superpowers at our fingertips, and while the controls definitely aren't the best in the world, the game is far from another red, blue, and yellow failure. The cell shaded graphics and the cutscenes still, in 2020, look awesome. If the animated series was reproduced in three dimensions, this is exactly what it would look and sound like, and that is awesome. Skull Monkeys is a game you've got to see to believe. Its claymation art style is unlike pretty much anything the PlayStation was offering in 1998. Its character design is... Jesus Christ. Full disclosure guys, this game scared the shit out of me as a kid, and I find it unsettling now as a 29 year old man. But. Much like the painting of the Kramer that hangs in my living room, I just can't look away. Skull Monkeys is truly unique, and even more than two decades after its release, I can't think of another game that makes me feel the way this one does. The hidden bonus room song is something I think about all the time. Here's a little bonus room, cause I know you've had it tough. And here's a little bonus tune, about collecting real cool stuff. Yes, here's a little bonus room where you can play. Don't be fright. 
mountain, don't run away. You can linger, cause I'm your video friend. Think of me as a father figure with a hand to land. Here's a little bonus room where you don't have to worry. Take your sweet time, you need not hurry. Oh, you're looking incredible, you're the bomb. And me, I'm kind of like your dad, and a little like your mom. There are no monsters here, hey wait, look over there. <laughs> I was just kidding, don't be scared. Skull Monkeys breaks the fourth wall, builds another wall somewhere else, and breaks that one too. The game is fairly rare, pretty expensive, and quite difficult to beat, so be aware of that if you're interested in tracking this one down. It's just such a weird experience that I wish more people talked about. Consider this me doing my part. There you have it Dandans, thank you for checking out Games That Didn't Get Enough Love Volume 2. Make sure you leave a comment down below with a game or two that you think didn't get the love that it deserved. And reminder, 616-2020 is right around the corner. There are major announcements that are going to happen there. We're going to talk about a brand new show. Big shit is on the way. I love you guys very much, and I will see you next time.